a thermometer circuit that is designed with watt operational amplifier and one bipolar junction transistor is explained in this 207th video in the circuit playlist. A series of two Zener diodes, 3.9 volt and 4.3 volt, are utilized to provide a reference voltage that is relatively independent of temperature, as I will explain why. A bipolar junction transistor is used so that its PN junction is serving as a temperature probe for us, basically give us a sensation of temperature as I will uh, mention how it works and then a combination of two potentiometer 10 kilo ohm and a 250 kilo ohm potentiometer in the feedback loop of the operational amplifier are utilized to provide us the proper relationship between the measured temperature and also reported voltage at the output of the op amp. What do we want is we want the circuit to be designed basically the value of potentiometers R2 let's say and R1 should be set to a proper level so that the output voltage has this specific formula or relationship with temperature. So for example, let's say if x-axis is uh, temperature in degree C, so degree C, and if the y-axis is the output voltage, so let me show it this way, is the output voltage, what I would like to report is something like this. At temperature zero degree C, so here, at zero degree C, I would like to have roughly zero volt at the output. Then as temperature is increasing for one degree C increase, I want to see 100 millivolt basically, that is one over 10 that you see here, that's uh, one over 10 volt, which means 100 millivolt. I want to see 100 millivolt increase. If we see two degree C increase in temperature, I want the circuit to report 200 millivolt and so on and so forth. So I want this linear relationship that every increase in temperature by one degree C translate to 100 millivolt increase in the voltage of the in the voltage of circuit. So uh, that's the sort of behavior I want to see in the circuit. Okay, so let's see how the circuit is working now. So we have these two Zener diodes. Let's take a look at their temperature coefficients. So for instance, uh, the temperature coefficients of uh, important Zener diodes are reported in this table. So I'm going to magnify it so that it's easily observable. Take a look at the 3.9 volt 1N5228 from Vichet. That's the one Zener diode. And if you look at the temperature coefficient, it has a temperature coefficient of minus 0 0.06, which means the nominal voltage of this Zener diode is 3.9 times 1 minus 0 0.06 divided by 100 times, let's say, the change in temperature that is observed. So um, any uh, change in temperature of this inner diet, let's say delta T, will result in a change in the nominal 3.9 by this amount of the voltage. As temperature is increasing, because of negative temperature coefficient, the nominal voltage starts dropping. Now let's take a look at the next one, 1N5229, 4.3 volt. So if I go there, and you can see that the temperature coefficient for this one is positive actually, 0 0.55. So the nominal voltage of this center diode instead of 4.3 volt, now is going to be 4.3 times 1 plus 0 0.50, 1 plus 0 0.055, divide by 100 times delta T. So this one, as the temperature is increasing, it has a positive temperature coefficient, so from nominal voltage of 4.3, it starts actually increasing. So when we have, so let's keep these two formulas, and I'm going to copy paste them for the reference uh, to what we have above here. Okay, so I am going to have them here. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to use them is now when we have in series these two Zener diodes, effectively I can say the total voltage across them, plus minus. Uh, and the bias happens from the zero volt here. So the bias current goes through the series of these two Zener diodes and then through the one kilo ohm to the negative 15 volt reference voltage that we have in the circuit. Okay, so what is the total voltage drop? So it would be the sum of, uh, basically, the total v Zener would be equal to v Zener 1 plus v Zener 2. And I'm going to substitute for them. So v Zener 1 is, uh, let's say, 3.9. And then 1 minus 0 0.06 uh, over 100 times delta T. 
let's say from the starting temperature uh, reference, for example, zero degrees C, and then plus 4.3 times 1.0.055 uh, divided by 100, that's for the second v Zener diet, del delta T. So I just basically substituted for these two guys. If we compute this, we end up with this interesting outcome. We end up with roughly uh, 8.2 volt nominal, but then times 1 plus 0. Point, a very low voltage actually, so roughly 0. 0.005 uh, over 100 on that order, if you compute that, if I recall properly. So what I'm saying is, uh, all that I'm trying to mention here is uh, the effective delta between these two, or even less. So it's it's actually going to be a very ne negligible number. M uh, maybe it was two. All I'm trying to say is now the resulting temperature coefficient for uh, the overall filter is so, so, so small, for the overall Zener diet is so small that we can actually neglect it because uh, over a span of temperature change, the 8.2 nominal voltage across the two Zener diode remains relatively constant. So we can say practically the 8.2 drop across these two Zener diodes is very stable, not changing that much with temperature. That's how we are saying we, stable, we sort of establish a stable reference voltage. Okay, so then how does it work? So there will be from zero volt here, uh, to here, there will be negative 8.2 volt drop. And then we have negative 15 volt here. So between negative 8.2 and negative 15, then there is 6.8 volt drop across this one kilo ohm. So let me shift this. So basically, uh, it means the plus minus voltage drop across the one kilo ohm will be 6.8 volt. And therefore, the DC current going through the one kilo ohm will be um, just this current is basically just 6.8 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm, which is 6.8 milliamp. That is a very good current for the DC bias of the two Zener diet. So roughly I can say, I'm going to show you, uh, there is an, this is the by far the biggest current component. So the current that is passing through these two Zener diet is roughly 6.8 milliamp, which is very good for DC biasing of the Zener diets. Okay, so that, with that solved, then let's focus on the remaining part of the part of the circuit. And bear in mind that the op amp is, of course, properly biased. So, whatever uh, supply voltage we we need to apply to the, let's say the uh, op amp, should we should apply it. So, if it is plus minus fifteen volt, we should apply that. If it is depends on the design. All I'm saying is let's make sure that the supply voltages for the op amp. Uh, properly applied and also uh, by default we can see output of our amp is connected via the negative or inverting terminal via the resistor or potentiometer R2 so negative feedback is there and therefore the circuit is um, in a stable form up amp is in linear region and virtual short is valid for the up amp so uh, I'm going to say the voltage at positive terminal of op amp should be equal to voltage at negative terminal because of enforced virtual short for the op amp in a steady state Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Now, uh, we have a VBE drop between, uh, because this transistor is in diode formation effectively as it is, there is just a plus minus VBE drop, voltage of base emitter drop uh, between zero volt and this node. So let's uh, make the assumption that at reference temperature zero degree C, uh, so as reference temperature 0 degree C, which is uh, on the order of 270 degree Kelvin, let's make the assumption that the voltage of base emitter of this uh, trans diode form transistor, um, so it's going to be 0.7 volt or 700 millivolt. Okay, so that's the assumption we're going to make. Now, what I'm going to... What I'm going to show is, therefore, at uh, at the reference temperature of zero degree C for the junction of the bipolar junction transistor here, which is working as a temperature probe for us, effectively, uh, we have negative 0.7 volt here at this node, which means that the default voltage then at the positive terminal of 
input terminal of op amp is negative 0.7 volt and because of virtual short then the negative terminal should be at negative 0.7 volt as well which means VBE so this node is at negative 0.7 volt now that means obviously uh, there is a voltage drop of 1 VBE across 10 kilo ohm which is uh, 0.7 volt so what I'm gonna write here is there is a current uh, going through this resistor, which is the current, let's say as a reference, the current I2. There is one current that is going through this 200K resistor, which is, I'm going to refer to it as I1. This current was the current of Zener diode IZ, which was only a matter of just double checking we have enough DC current for the Zener diode to bias it properly. And then there is another current that is going through this 47 kilo ohm, which I refer to as I3. There is no current that can go or come out of the input terminal of op amp, so zero microamp and zero microamp. So all that happens is there is a current that is going through, I refer to it as delta I, which I'm gonna say Y, but that delta I going through the potentiometer R2 is basically um, the delta between, so let me, let me use a different color. This delta I is just I3 minus I2. So at this node, if I write a KCL at this node, if I let's refer to it as a node X. At node X, if I write a KCL, I can simply say, so let me just write it, KCL or Kirchhoff current law at node X is basically saying delta I is equal to uh, the current going out I3 minus the current coming in I2. So it's obviously I3 minus I2. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. And my purpose here is I would like to set the, as, as, you show, as was shown in the plot, when the temperature is 0 degrees C for the junction of the probe or PN junction of the BJT transistor, then I want the R2 and R1 to be set in such a way that the voltage drop across R2 is exactly 0.7 volt as well, so that output is 0 volt, because we know that this node is already at negative 0.7 volt. So, so if I have 0.7 volt drop across R2, then output would be at 0 volt, which is exactly the nice setup that I have. Okay, so um, there, th therefore my desire is uh, at let's say temperature T equal to zero degree C, I want R2 times delta T to be delta uh, R2 times delta I. So the current delta I going through R2 result in a voltage drop. I want that to be equal to 700 millivolt or 0.7 volt. All right. So what I'm gonna do is now from this equation, what I get is delta I is equal to 0.7 divided by R2. Let's refer to this as equation one. And I'm gonna expand on equation one. So here I am going to write from equation one, I have uh, delta I and of course I3 minus I2 equal to uh, 0.7 over an R2. And remember, the whole purpose is we want to find somehow equations that would enforce a specific value for R2 and R1 so that uh, the nice plot we have, which is the desired characteristic of the circuit, uh, is going to be materialized. So at the starting point, we have 0 volt, and then uh, the slope of increase is 100 millivolt at the output per degree C increase of the voltage of the of the of the temperature of the PN junction of the BJT transistor. Okay, so let's expand further. Uh, for on this in this equation that is coming from equation one, what is I3? I3 is the current that is going through the 47 kilo ohm. What is that? Uh, okay, so uh, that that is easy because we know that the voltage drop um, from we know exactly what's going on. We know that the voltage drop here is negative 0.7, and the ne voltage at this point is negative, point, uh, negative 8.2 volt. And therefore, we know that across uh, 47K, we have 
on one side negative 0.7 on the other side we have negative 0.82 so basically the voltage drop across 47k is just uh, 7.5 uh, volt that is the delta between 8.2 and 0.7 here so that's uh, 7.5 volt drop across 47 therefore i3 is as simple as i'm going to just show it here i3 is just basically 7.5 volt divided by 47 kilo ohm that's i3 minus i2 i2 is the current through the uh, let's say 10 kilo ohm potentiometer which is not necessarily set to 10k it can be a value from 0 to 10k because it's adjustable resistor but the value of r2 i2 is basically just 0.7 volt drop across potentiometer divided by r1 so it's going to be 0.7 volt divided by r1 and then equal to as you see is equal to 0.7 divided by r2 0.7 divided by r2 okay great so let's just move uh, uh, this negative 0.7 over r1 to the other side and then uh, divide both sides to by 0.7 to just make it nicer so it's going to be then 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 equal to uh, 7.5 divided by 0.7 which will give us the nice outcome which is i already computed that 10.714 so 10.714 divided by 47 kilo ohm let's keep this as equation number two here i'm going to use it soon okay so that's the outcome of trying to as i said enforce the situation that the output voltage is zero when the temperature sensed at the junction of the bjt transistor exactly represents zero de zero uh, degrees uh, let's say uh, celsius now let's move on to what we have in terms of the ac or uh, variation of the circuit so the junction of a bipolar junction transistor is well known to have the behavior so let's say for uh, bjt we know this uh, well-known behavior that the uh, voltage vbe so the voltage of base emitter for the junction of the uh, npn transistor uh, versus the temperature is uh, well known to roughly change uh, minus by minus 2.1 millivolt per degree c or degree kelvin um, at the nominal bias so that is the sensitivity of the let's say base emitter voltage as a function of temperature so what does it mean it means that the voltage at a positive terminal of the op amp which is exactly the result of base emitter as temperature is in, increasing uh, the vbe is decreasing by uh, the voltage of base emitter is decreasing by uh, negative two, by by two by basically 2.1 millivolt per degree c so this voltage at the positive terminal start increasing as the temperature is increasing so getting closer to let's say uh, ground that is shown here so it's as if from perspective of this ac analysis it's as if we have the circuit here i'm going to show it here so it's as if we have negative terminal of the op amp and on positive side we have a let's say voltage wise so we have um, this change so effectively we have negative 0.21 millivolt per degree c times the change in temperature so that's as if we have a signal that is that is applied at so delta vbe is equal to this much as as a signal that is applied at the positive terminal and then a negative terminal ac wise effectively we have uh, see that because of the enforced reference voltage of the cascade of two zener diodes then we have fixed minus 8.2 volt on uh, this side and then we have fixed uh, let's say voltage uh, ground on this side so effectively ac wise from perspective of negative terminal we can say uh, we can say that uh, 47 kilo ohm is in parallel with uh, r1 whatever value of that 10 kilo ohm uh, let's say potential meter so i'm going to show it this way i'm going to show it a negative terminal i have 47 kilo ohm 
and I have an R1 value which is of the potentiometer which is nominal 10k and both of them they are effectively AC wise connected to ground okay and then we have the R2 potentiometer which is the nominal 250k potentiometer and then we have the output voltage so what do we have effectively is a non-inverting um, up amp formation or amplifier and for non-inverting amplifier the gain is well known I know that from the, the voltage at positive terminal to the output the relation is simply as V out is equal to 1 plus um, R2 which is the feedback uh, resistor divided by the R1 in parallel with 47 kilo ohm so R1 parallel with 47 kilo ohm and of course don't forget about plus one and then that's the gain voltage gain for this non-inverting amplifier times uh, whatever you apply so it's going to be for every uh, and remember it's a positive voltage because as I said the VBE is de decreasing by 2.1 millivolt so the as temperature is increasing the voltage at positive terminal is actually going up because VB is decreasing so I'm going to refer it to, to, to this way I'm going to say my desired out behavior is like this we have 2.1 millivolt increase at positive terminal per degree C and what I desired at the output V out is I want to see 100 millivolt that's what my desire with respect to what I showed in the in the plot that uh, the behavior of V out as a function of temperature I want tangent or a slope of 100 millivolt per degree C so when input is at positive terminal is increasing 2.1 millivolt per degree C I want to see V out increase by 100 millivolt per degree C so therefore um, from this relationship I can say my observation indicates that 1 plus R2 over R1 parallel 47 kilo ohm should be roughly equal to 100 millivolt divided by 2.1 which is 47.6 roughly and therefore uh, from here obviously the conclusion is we learn that R2 and then uh, 1 over R1 parallel with 47k simply 1 over R1 plus 1 over 47k Uh, let me just write it here it's nicer if I write it here so from here I conclude that uh, one I conclude that R2 times instead of 1 over R1 parallel 47 I'm gonna write 1 over R1 plus 1 over 47k is equal to 40 47.6 minus 1 is 46.6 .6, so it's gonna be 46.6 divided by uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to move the R2 later, later so I can move this R2 to the other side so it become R2 here and this is the outcome I wanted to have so here is equation number three okay so the most important thing is comparison and uh, basically now I have equation two that relates uh, for for let's say uh, R1 and R2 that are unknown and then I have equation 3 that it also shows some sort of a relationship between R2 and R1 as well so I have two unknown two equation I can solve for it and that's the whole purpose given that I have 1 over R1 in both of them the best way is just subtracting each other from each other so I'm gonna do that there you go so I'm gonna write let's just uh, subtract equation uh, 2 from 3 so 2 minus 3 will give me um, 1 over 47k and uh, what I get is 1 over 47k minus 1 over 2 that's on the left on the left side and then on the right side I get 46.6 divided by r2 minus 10.714 divided by 47k well this is as nice as it gets because we have 47k on one side so effectively I can simply just quickly write 11.714 over 47k is equal to um, 47.6 
divide by R2. If you solve R2, then you're going to get R2 roughly equal to 191 kilo ohm. Very nice. So what does it mean? It means that in this 250 kilo ohm potentiometer, we need to adjust the level of potentiometer so that it gets somewhere close to 191, which is in range, because it can go as high as 250k. If we do so, then what about R1? So we're going to apply this R2 back into either this equation or into this equation, doesn't matter. As soon as we do that, then I'm going to apply the value of R2 into, say, equation 3, and you will find that R, uh, R1 naturally becomes equal to, again, 4.49 kilo ohm. So that is also in range for the 10 kilo ohm. Remember, R1 is the name of the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. So we need to adjust the, uh, let's say, the pointer of the potentiometer so that we get uh, a value up to 10k, which is 4.49k specifically, which is in range. That's good. Okay, so uh, situation now becomes as easy as this. Uh, if you, we are done basically with, in terms of uh, setting up the, the two unknown in this uh, design, which is the value of R1 and value of R2, so that we get this nice characteristic uh, sort of behavior out of the circuit, we are done. But let's confirm that's the case. Basically, let's confirm that this is the equation for the output voltage as a function of the junction temperature that is sensed by the base emitter of the transistor. So in order to check that, uh, let's check, let's uh, quickly re redraw the equivalent circuit no, now that we know R2 and R1 as we found them here. So if I do that, then the circuit looks like this. It would be, uh, again, we have the positive terminal connected to uh, 2.1 millivolt increase in voltage of the positive uh, depending on how many how much how, let's say how much temperature has changed so delta t means change from the zero uh, degree c and then for the parallel of 47k and 4.49 if we compute that effectively becomes 4.1k so that is and then it's if ac ground that but that 4.51k as a reference is just basically 47k which is this resistor parallel with 4.49 which is the value we found for r1 so i'm going to write 4.7 47 parallel with 4.49 but the effective total then becomes 4.1 and the other one is the resistor r2 is the potentiometer r2 which is the one we found should be set to 191 191 Okay, so what is, the, for this non-inverting amplifier, what is the gain then? Uh, so it's it's now obvious. So the gain of this non-inverting amplifier is 1 plus 191 over 41, 4.1. Which, if you compute it, is roughly on the order of 47.6. And with this gain, it's obvious what's going to happen. So basically, then it means... Uh, the output voltage becomes 47.6, that's the gain, times the input voltage, which is 2.1 times delta T. So 2.1 millivolt times delta T. And therefore, if you compute that, that exactly gives us roughly very close uh, to 100 millivolt, which is 0.1 volt times delta T. So exactly the behavior we wanted in the circuit. Uh, you can rewrite it as delta T over 10, if you like, because 100 millivolt is 0.1 volt, which is 1 over 10. Um, so that's exactly the equation that I wrote here. And delta T becomes T because we said uh, our reference is with respect to degrees, uh, 0 degrees C. So you can, you can say this is T over 10 when T is the uh, temperature with respect to the 0 degrees C. Now, at zero degree C, we can also check what's going on. Do we get really the zero volt at the, at the uh, let's say, center point of the plot or not? Well, we go back to the equation we wrote here. So remember equation, um, equation one here, delta I equal to 0.7, or basically uh, I want to show that 
uh, I want to show that really the R2 times delta I give me the 0.7 volt uh, that was promised because then that it, that means that we get zero volt at the output. So let's see what is R2 times delta I. Okay, so uh, for that check, R2 times delta I is R2 is now as we found it is 1.191 kilo ohm. And delta I is I3 minus I2. Okay, so it's 191 kilo ohm. And our I3 is still same as before, 7.5 volt across the 47 kilo ohm. And I2 is the current through the 10 through the R1, 10K nominal, but that R1 is actually, as we found it, is 4.49. So we have now. Um, 0.7 volt again this is computed at uh, junction temperature zero degree c right reference computation so we want to see at the reference uh, temperature zero degree c then do we get uh, 0.7 volt across r2 or basically do we get zero volt at the output of the circuit or not so 0.7 divided by uh, the value of R1, which is 4.49. If you compute this, it becomes very close, actually. So it becomes on the order of, say, a few millivolt. So on the order of roughly, uh, say, minus uh, plus 7 millivolt on that order, or minus 7 millivolt, which is negligible. So, which is close to zero volt. Because as I said, we are close to zero volt. Uh, and then, of course, we can always fine tune so that it exactly gets zero. But this negative seven millivolt is very slight uh, in change from zero. But uh, every degree C, we're going to get additional 100 millivolt increase. So this concludes the analysis of the circuit. Uh, basically, we show that a simple thermometer circuit can be designed with one op-amp, one bipolar junction transistor, and two Zener diode that establish a very stable reference voltage. And then by using two potentiometer with proper setting of them, we can actually achieve um, a sort of a level adjustment so that we realize this nice characteristic or let's say uh, voltage versus temperature behavior for this thermometer circuit. I hope this uh, circuit analysis is interesting and uh, helpful or useful. Thanks for watching.